Mark Evers here, President of Occupational Athletics, and we're here at Autoclore Branch 630 in Queens, New York. And uh, we got the management team here today, and what we're doing is we're rolling out game plan and our train and trainer, part of the physical readiness system. So the first, we're gonna dial in on game plan, and this is our motivational talk to get you inspired and get you ready for your game day every day, and really puts the purpose behind why we're doing this. So you guys got your game face on here? Okay, how many of you are open-minded thinkers? How many are open-minded? Open-minded guys? You didn't raise your hand. <laughs> this is an open-minded approach to look at yourself a little differently, okay? Because when your minds are closed, nothing really doesn't work. So your minds are like parachutes, and they work when they're open. So we're gonna open up our minds for a talk, and we're gonna go outside of the box, think outside the box. Now I've written several books on this subject of training workers like athletes. I worked with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Dr. Bradley, uh, worked with the Olympic Committee. So my athletic background is transferred over now into the industrial and the corporate world. So we've been around for 34 years um, at this, training workers like athletes. And uh, this is our pep talk to get you going. So if you're gonna think outside the box with an open mind, think about this. How many autochlor athletes come into work every day, say it's Monday morning, and first thing they do is give you a high five or chest pump. Does that happen in the morning? Do they wake up and say, I'm an athlete in life, today's another game day here? Or is it a work day? It's a work day. It's a work day, right? Most of us view work as work, and it is. What do you think of all the physical demands that they have? You know, in and out of the trucks, lifting materials, okay, handling chemicals and equipment. When I look at what they do from a physical demand standpoint, I look at these guys as athletes. The reason why? They're game days all day long. And it's very strategic out there. They're the quarterback of the truck. So we got to engage them and get them ready for their game day. And it starts with this training. And you guys are the coaches. So we need the coaches on board. No different than an athletic team. When the coaches are engaged, the players are engaged too. So here we go. We're going to walk through the four cores of life. And this approach is designed to help you have a game plan to live. So you think about how many of you guys have a game plan to live? Anybody here have a plan to live? Now think about it. Think about all the things you plan in your life. We plan our schedules. We plan meetings. How many meetings do you guys do in a month to plan business events? A lot, right? All this planning going on. But the issue is a lot of people aren't planning this process. So what we're going to look at today is how we integrate lifestyle to safety to have a plan to live. So we call this human maintenance. Why do we call it human maintenance? Would you agree there's maintenance going on? You guys do maintenance, right, for your business? Yeah. Is that a big part of what Autoclore does is huge, maintenance? Huge, huge part of what we do. Do you maintenance the vehicles? Do you maintenance the buildings? If you got rid of maintenance here in this company, how long would Autoclore last? Not very long. Not very long. What's the most valuable asset in this business? People. It's the people. Now, this is out of the box thinking, guys. What we've developed over the years, we saw that wellness programs only work for well people. You offer a corporate wellness program, who shows up? Well, people, you can't make them do it. But every company has safety, so think about this idea. Every company does maintenance on their buildings, they do it on their vehicles, but look what we're doing here. We're doing maintenance on a worker, okay? The reason why we do this, if they're the most valuable asset, where's all the maintenance for them? So physical readiness is part of the maintenance. We're gonna get all the workers prepared for the day, mentally and physically, to help maintain them to shrink risk, injuries, accidents, and help them to live better. So that's what we're looking at, human maintenance. And it says up here, extend the warranty on the most valuable asset, your people. So last year I was speaking in uh, Las Vegas at a CEO conference, 75 CEOs, and I did about 100 plus talks a year all over the country. And uh, I said to these CEOs, I said, what's the most valuable asset? What do you think they all said in your company? Same thing you said, our people. You all have maintenance departments? Absolutely. I asked one guy, how many maintenance people are in your business? He said, over 1,000 full-time maintenance employees. I said, wow, it's a big maintenance department. What do you do? He said, I'm the CEO of Greyhound Bus. We have a lot of buses need maintenance. I said, what are you doing for your bus operators to maintain them? You know, we talk safety, have a safe drive, and hopefully come back alive. So this is where we're going to think about this, the human maintenance system. So you think about things that you maintain in your life. Do you guys own a home? And think about how many homes have you lived in since you were a kid. Uh, you maintain your lawns and your vehicles and the things. We're doing this stuff, and if we don't do this maintenance on these objects, uh, they start to, this is, I'll show you what's going to happen. But would you agree, this is important to us. And if you live in a neighborhood, do you, do you like it when you maintain your home and your neighbor doesn't? That affects the value of your home. So all this maintenance is going on into material assets. So here's what happens. If we don't maintain ourselves, what happens? They, I mean, they start to break down, just like the human machine. 
But if, if you don't, it's not, this is not rocket science, guys. We all know this is why we have maintenance in our companies. You have to replace it sometimes. Let's say a vehicle is worn out. It doesn't make sense to repair it. Then you're going to replace it. It costs more. Would you agree? And at the end of the day, sometimes you just live without it. Man, I don't really need another one of those. You live without it. Let's think about you. So what happens to you? Have you ever broken down before? Has your body ever broken down? And working in orthopedics and sports medicine, I've dealt with a lot of broken bodies. My body's been broken down. I went through back surgery years ago from old football wrestling injuries. And if you've experienced pain, I'm sure we all have. We get sick sometimes. I never met anybody who says, hey, Mark, I can't wait to have the next flu. I really enjoyed that last cold. I had. We don't want to get sick. We might have surgeries. I've been through them. Anybody else ever been through a surgery? You know, and well, from that, you might have pain and suffering. Okay. Then our family's affected by this stuff. Work life is affected. And depending on the severity of that injury or illness, you may never be the same again. I've seen some horrific, I mean, I worked in hospitals. I've worked in nursing homes and all kinds of environments. And I don't think anybody wants to finish their life in a nursing home or hospital. But this stuff is going on a lot in this country. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, guys. Bottom line is a lot of people are not living properly in the United States. So when we look at the human machine, would you agree it's the most complex machine on the planet? Okay. Humans are, you made all this equipment. And we, we manufacture, even the, the technology we have, we make that stuff. And you're very difficult to diagnose. If you have a problem, how hard is it to figure out what's wrong, what's wrong with you? You ever go to the doctor? You spend like an hour waiting for the doctor. You get in, and, and after you talk about your symptoms, they don't really know what it is anyway. It's like a guessing game, and then they put you on a prescription. You're very challenging to fix. You know the hardest thing to fix with a human being? What do you think it is? The hardest thing to diagnose and fix. Thank you. That's exactly right. It's the brain. Did you know that mental illness in America is the highest it's ever been in the history of the United States? We're struggling. A lot of people have mental issues, okay? It's common. I bet you everybody in this room knows somebody has anxiety, panic disorder, okay? Maybe bipolar or something going on. So the head stuff is really hard to figure out. And we're not going to figure all this out today, but we're challenging to fix. And depending on the scenario, so expensive to repair. You know, staying in a hospital for just one night is going to cost a lot of money. So if we're going to think out of the box, you guys, let's start thinking about why we're really here at Autoclor. It's for human maintenance to protect the most valuable asset, and that's the worker, and you guys as the leadership team. So really, you're your only home. Now, if you don't like where you're living, you can go get another house. If you don't like what you're driving, go trade your car and get another one. Can you do that with yourself? And my mom's 89 years old. And she said, Mark, can you trade my body in on new one? Her body's broken, but her head's good. She's one of those seniors, good from the neck up, neck down. She's pretty beat up. Well, here's the thing. Have you looked, ever looked at yourself? You're really your only home? You. You're sitting with it right now. And this home you're sitting with has to get in your vehicle to take you to your destination, has to take you to the home you're going to sleep, you know, under the roof that you got. You got to nurse this home. You got to take care of this home. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't look at themselves that way. So get this, I was speaking in at Atlanta, Georgia last year at a healthcare conference, predominantly all physicians. And I'm looking at all these doctors, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, these are some really unhealthy people. You ever been to a hospital or a nursing home and see how unhealthy the workers are? Now, you would think they would want to take care of themselves so they don't have to lay in those hospital beds. And I'm blown away. There's a doctor in the front row, was so deconditioned, morbidly obese, an MD. He came up to me after he saw it when I did my talk, and he, saw, he, he said, this slide made an impact on me. He said, look at me. I'm a doctor. I know better. I don't take care of myself. I said, why not? You know what he said? I'm caught up. I'm caught up. Anybody here get caught up? You get busy, right? Thank you. No time. No time to take care of me. So at the end of the day, if you get caught up and don't take care of you, your home is suffering from that. So we need to get serious about this. So everybody, if you experience, if you got kids, you guys got kids, okay, you bring a life in the world, it's great. Somebody takes their last breath, it's a sad occasion. It's going to happen. So let's look at ourselves. We're really our own home, and we're going to help protect those homes with what we're doing. Now, let me share some lifespans cut short. I'm going to rattle, get down on these real quick. Lifespan of a manufacturing worker with 20 plus years of service is 67. Heavy construction and utility workers at 64. MTA, you guys know them. You're right there. I worked with MTA. They said the average MTA worker is 61. They get 18 pension checks and they're dead. Average MTA. Yeah. 58, commercial airline pilots. Pennsylvania State Police, 58, it's terrible. 57, company fleet truck drivers. Okay, 56, a deep sea fisherman. 
54, a minor. Over the road truck drivers. This is my audience on Sirius XM Radio. I'm on the Road Dog channel. I talk to truckers all the time. 53, I spoke at a conference yesterday, and one of the guys there was from PMTA, the Pennsylvania Motor Truck Association. They said the lifespan for truck drivers continues to decline. Okay, sad. 52, NFL linemen. This is the big boys in the NFL. Average weight of alignment, 325 plus pounds. What are you going to do with all that weight and retire? Because your heart, your joints, it's going to beat you up. Okay, 48 is a metropolitan firefighter. Lifespan. Like your big city firefighters, Manhattan, Chicago, Los Angeles. So this number 42, take a guess. Who do you think would go so early? What career is the riskiest career in the world? Window washer. CEO, window washer. That's a good guess. I had somebody a couple weeks ago say a sumo wrestler. I don't have a stat, but I like, I'm trying to get a stat. This is an underwater welder, okay? Riskiest occupation in the world. These guys make twelve to $1,500 a day to die young. The question is, is it worth the cash? My opinion, not. Well, you're looking at these careers and say, well, why is this going on? And the reason why we do this training here, we're sharing this with AutoCore, is that we need to see the big picture, guys. It's not just stretching. It's really about understanding the physiology of life, okay, and what happens as we get older. So let's talk about the drivers of lifespan. First of all, everybody here has got genetics. Do you know what you got? Good ones, bad ones, any heart disease, strokes, cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes, osteoporosis, arthritis. That stuff is genetic. That's called DNA, okay? The next thing we got to recognize is your lifestyle. Now, everybody here at AutoCore has a different lifestyle. Would you agree? Now, you all know each other if you're working at one of the branches. Uh, you see each other on a regular basis, but not everybody has the same lifestyle. Not everybody eats the same way, works out, and sleeps the same amount of hours. So think about your living. Is there any room for improvement? Because the way you live is driving your genetics, and a lot of people don't recognize that. They think, oh, I'm born this way. My daddy had heart disease. I'm going to get it too. Not necessarily. You live wrong, you're probably going to get it. And we're environment. We're a product of our environment. Do you guys believe that? Are you a product of AutoCore? Think about your work day. How many hours a day do you work? Nine hours? You guys average nine? Maybe more some days. How many hours do you sleep? Seven? That's pretty good. Yeah. Anybody get less than seven or eight hours? How many are you getting? Five and a half to six. Five and a half to six. What do you get? Six. So if you're sleeping six to eight hours and you're working eight, nine, what about your commute? How long does that take? <laughs> Out here in New York, we drove through here. It's crazy trying to get here, okay? The commutes are really challenging. So if you take your commute time, your work time, and your sleep time, would you agree the majority of your life is spent working and sleeping? And I don't want to depress you, but that's a big chunk of our life. If you retire at 65, maybe 70, the retirement age is going up. So here's the thing, guys. We got genetics. We can't change it. We got a lifestyle, and we got the people we hang out with. Now I'm showing you people jumping for joy. How many people come to work and sometimes are a little negative? You know any people with bad attitudes? If you're coming to work with a chip on your shoulder or a bad attitude, you know what it's going to do? It's going to rub off on your coworkers. It's like cancerous, okay? You may not change your environment, but you can change your attitude, and that's hard to do sometimes because you're dealing with stress, okay? You have stuff going on in your life. So we're going to help you start your work day on a positive note by getting you warmed up, stretched out, and high-fiving your fellow team members here at AutoClerk. So why should you care? Well, I love this statement Thomas Edison wrote. The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest the patient care of the human frame and diet cause and the prevention of disease. The doctor of the future will give no medicine. Is that happening today in America? Now, I grew up in the 70s, and if anybody's in my age category, in the 70s, I never saw a prescription drug on television being marketed on TV. Can you guys relate to that? Prescriptions. Remember, we saw over-the-counter remedies. Alka-Seltzer, Rolaids, stuff like that. Now we've got, you got a symptom, we got a medication. And would you agree when you see a medication ad, the first 10 seconds, ooh, I have that symptom. The next 50 seconds, e. I just heard one this morning. Uh, may cause death, suicidal thoughts. I mean, the, the, on and on and on. No, don't get me wrong. There's game-changing medications that can prolong mm -hmm. the disease or even keep it in remission. However, we got to take this serious because the doctor of the future has to do this. Now, the average time you get with a doctor in America, take a guess how much time you get with a doctor for a routine visit. Three to 12. Three to 12 minutes of the physician's time, 45 minutes to an hour average wait time, and after you hear all the symptoms that you might be feeling and the doctor listens to them, you might walk out with a prescription. 
So real quick, I'm going to drill down into five top leading causes of death. Again, the reason why we're sharing this is to educate you and hopefully inspire you that you want to live better. Number one cause of death, what do you think it is? That's correct. What's number two? Yep. Three? That's number five. That's number four. That used to be three. Three is infectious diseases and medical mistakes. They've lumped them together. It's climbed over the years. We got a lot of technology in medicine, but our, our system is broken. Would you agree? The healthcare system is struggling. So what we need to do, guys, take ownership for ourselves. And today, I hope everybody has a renewed interest. And when you're seeing this training at your auto course sites, take this stuff serious because you have to be your best patient advocate as you. So when we look at a lot of people don't take care of themselves. Again, I don't know how you're living here, but let's we gotta we gotta figure this thing out. So why don't people we call it behavior hurdles to change? If you're gonna change, I've heard you know, people say I'm old. Anybody here ever tell yourself you're old? If you say you're old, you're old. I was giving a talk last week and I said, Hey Mark, I'm old. I said, How old are you, my friend? He said, Twenty seven. No, sure, she said that. He goes, I feel old at 27. Now, yeah, it's all relative, right? If I'm seven years old, 27 is old. At 55 years old, 27 is a kid. I could be his dad. Okay. Some people don't care. You ever meet somebody who doesn't care? Oh, I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. In my travels all over the country, what I see, and when I go out of the country, there's different, the people live differently all over the world. We are challenged, and there's a lot of folks. I'm not saying it's you, but some people just don't care, and that's an attitude. Some people are impatient. They start a program. They want results like that. You ever notice that? They want results quick. It's not going to happen. Some people say, well, there's no hope for me. And then they start to worry. You guys ever, ever worry about anything? Now, here's the thing about worry. Does worry push you forward or backward? It usually takes you backward, okay? And with our society and the way things are going now in this nation, would you agree? You watch the news. It's rather alarming, you know, with the amount of stuff going on in our country. So there's a lot of worry going on, and that drives anxiety. It takes effort to take care of yourself. Now, you said you exercise on a regular basis. What time of day do you do your exercise? Weekends uh, after work. Take a little effort for you to do that? Yeah. yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. Here's the thing about effort. Would you agree all good stuff in your life takes effort, and the bad stuff shows up? Yeah. So you're worth the effort. So we're putting this program in article because there's a little bit of effort to do this, but at the end of the day, You'll reap tremendous rewards by the effort we put in. It takes some discipline. If you're going to take care of you, you got to be disciplined to do it. Uh, every, you ever get complacent? Now, the guy invented the phrase, think outside the box, endorsed the back of my game plan book, Mike Vance. He worked with Walt Disney. And he created that phrase in 1964, think outside the box. And his definition of that is, break through your complacent brain. Have you ever gotten complacent with your life? Same old stuff, different day? How many people they come to work and they're a little complacent? And when we see injuries and accidents, a lot of it has to do with complacency. Procrastination. Have you ever procrastinated? Well, I start that program tomorrow. I've been thinking about exercise or sleeping better or eating healthy. And people put themselves off. It's a big hurdle. What's it going to take you to get motivated? It's hard to motivate somebody. You ever try to motivate somebody? Coworker, family member? Who'd you try to motivate? Employee? How'd it go? And you guys are coaches. So with the train to train program as auto clerk coaches, you know, we got to get people motivated. And it's a tough, it's tough because people are struggling with all these hurdles. Discouragement. Some people get discouraged. They try something that didn't work. The next thing you know, they're discouraged. The next hurdle is commitment. What are you committed to? Now, this is where I see in my travels, more people committed to maintain material things than themselves. Even that physician that I met at that seminar I gave, said, I commit to take care of my home better than I do myself, and I'm an MD because I'm caught up. It takes energy. How's your energy level right now? On a scale from 1 to 10, where would you rank it? And how about your players? Every day they come to AutoCore, are they energized? Are they glad to be here? They're ready to put a productive day in. Some people are tired. Now what do they do? Drink energy drinks. How many energy drinks are available? When I was a kid, we drank Tang. Remember Tang? How about it? Now we got Red Bull, Rockstar, Monster, Amp. I mean, there's a boatload of them out there. And people are drinking these energy drinks like water out there. I was giving a talk in York, Pennsylvania not too long ago, and it was in a break room, about 150 employees. And this guy in the lunchroom had a Monster. You know those drinks? That's the big energy drink. Next to that was a Red Bull, and next to that was a five-hour energy. All three drinks lined up like trophies. 
I said, what are you going to do with these drinks? He goes, oh, this is halftime in my day. I'm going to drink all three. I said, right now? He said, oh, yeah. How do you feel after that? I'm all amped up. Then what happens? Oh, I really crash. He said, but I thought they were good for me. B vitamins. Come on, really? And the number one hurdle, take care of you. Would you agree your time? You're busy. You guys got to commute to get here. You got to work long hours. We are pressed for time. This is why we have fast food restaurants. This is why we have convenience stores. It's all about time. So how much time are you going to have? Let's take a look. Average lifespan right now for a man. Anybody know what's the average lifespan for a man in the United States? 74, 72. Well, it's actually 76 to 80 is average for a man. And how long do women live? 83. So I get this. I was giving a talk in uh, Louisville, Kentucky last year for a utility. And I had about uh, 150, 200 people. I said, all right, guys. How long do women live? And this guy chimed in. He said, women never die. I said, oh, they go to. And he had like a disgruntled attitude about his spouse. He goes, I'm dying first because I want to get out of here. I've heard that before, but that's just not true. Here's the thing. Ladies do outlive us, but not like they used to. 78 to 84 lifespan of the ladies. Now, women were outliving men 10 years, 50 years ago. Did you know that? The gap shrunk. Eight to ten years on average. Why don't women outlive men eight to ten like they used to? More in the workforce. Yeah. Exactly. Stress. Equal rights, women's liberation many years ago, they decided to go to work. They did. And because of stress levels and dealing with the same thing men have had for many years, their lifestyle behaviors have, are much like men. So the idea of the game plan is, let's say we're all going to live to 80. That's the end of the game. We could live longer, okay, based on genetics and lifestyle. So why are we living longer? Well, first of all, we're living 29 years longer than we did in 1900, and here's the reason why. First of all, medical technology. Now, being an orthopedic guy working in sports medicine years ago, if you had a torn meniscus, we'd cut your whole knee to go fix it. Now we'll scope it, okay? Uh, heart surgery, cancer treatments, our technology in modern medicines, no question. We can prolong life, but the question is, are you living better? The studies are showing that kids today growing up aren't going to live as long as you if they don't change their behaviors. And But we have the ability to keep you alive longer. That's why we're living longer today. So when we look at genetics, we've got a family history, and we're starting to look different. Do you look different today than high school? What year did you graduate? Do you mind me asking? Uh, 86. 86. You look different than 1986. What would you say is the greatest difference cosmetically? Uh, hair. Hair. Yep. That's a common thing for men. They might lose it where they want it. Might gain it out their ears. You trimming your ears yet? Yeah. Good. Got a groomer? Yeah, it's not fair, is it? Yeah, it happens. So we look different cosmetically, and we feel different. Now, everybody changes more rap. Some people change more rapidly than others. So we're going to go through physical changes. Do your bodies feel different today than high school? And if you're like everybody, yeah, you have more aches and pains. You know, your body's, the, the machine's been used more. So if, if the machine's being used a lot, it's going to maybe start to feel the effects of that. So here's two women. This woman is a heavy smoker. She landed in a skilled nursing home. Now, I've worked in nursing homes, and we have a couple contracts with nursing homes to take care of the staff. Would you agree a nursing home is a sad place to visit? Does anybody want to retire in a nursing home? Never. But a lot of people are ending up in nursing homes because they didn't take care of themselves. A lot of people don't know this, but they estimate 35 to 65% of nursing home patients are there because of no human maintenance as they age. They didn't take care of themselves. And the machine starts to break down. The mind starts to go. It's all connected. Here's a woman loving life. She's at the beach. So we're saying here, which life are you designing? What are you designing for yourself? You have choices. The problem is we have a lot of unhealthy choices in the United States. So when we look at the mind, everything starts with the mind. The reason why we do these training, guys, we believe it's important to get in the mind. We don't want to just come in and say, oh, we're going to start stretching every day and doing physical readiness. We want to come in and say there's a real purpose behind this, and it starts with the way you think. So what the mind can conceive and believe, the mind will achieve. If you've never seen the statement, do you agree with that? If your mind says you're old, you're old. If your mind says you don't care, you don't care. So whatever your mind tells you is what you're going to get. If your mind says, hey, I could go for a donut, next thing you know, there's Dunkin' Donut. Next thing you know, you're blown in the blowhorn. Retrain the brain. That's why it's hard to change somebody. We can't necessarily change the way they think. So if we have a positive program here at AutoCore every day, they're feeling their bodies, they're feeling their brains. This can help them think a little more positively about where they are now in their life. So here's one of my favorite books. This is Growing Old is Not for Sissies. 
Uh, this is a book that was written by uh, Etta Clark, and this is John Turner. He's 82 years old in that photograph. How many 82-year-olds do you know in your life looking like this guy? I had a chance to meet him once at a, at a, at a health and fitness expo in, in Las Vegas. And when I met him, I was blown away by this guy. He said, look, I feel better in my 80s than some kids feel in their 20s. And I can do more in my 80s than some kids can do in their 20s. And he's right, because growing old is not for sissies. And this is a 92-year-old surfer still surfing. Great book to get inspired. So if you haven't seen it, get that on Amazon. It's a really cool book. But look at this old gal. Anything that's possible, stretch your imagination. Now, we're promoting flexibility here at Autoclore, but don't start doing this here, all right? This woman was a gymnast when she was younger, and she got into uh, dancing and yoga and Pilates, and she's 86 years old, and she can still do an inverted split, and look how muscular she is. Uh, and the reason I share her story is because sometimes we use age as a crutch. I can't do something because of my age. Now, again, we promote flexibility. Don't try doing this. However, anybody can get more flexible. So as we look at our bodies as with age, would you agree you might see a little deconditioning going on? Now, when we look at injuries, there's three main reasons why somebody gets hurt. A deconditioned body doing physical work, improper body mechanics, and total lack of awareness. This is why we get hurt. We didn't lift properly. We didn't think something happened. Or our body is not flexible. Okay, We're not fit for duty. And those are reasons why we stimulate soft tissue injuries and, and, and injuries at work. So if you do this, you take care of this with a physical readiness program, it's going to reduce this risk over here. Would you agree at your age, if you get hurt now, that risk of injury is not only higher, the recovery time is way longer. A 50-year-old back injury and a 20-year-old back injury, different ballgame. Severity goes up with age. We all know that. So when we look at illness, it's much the same. It's going to go up. So we, we, our model of care and what we're sharing here with Autoclore is, you know, it's a, it's a total package, meaning integrate lifestyle to safety because we want to shrink this risk too. So at Autoclore, if you think about your expenses, uh, when it comes to costs, <laughs> would you agree healthcare benefits is your second highest cost next to your payroll? So let's shrink some of that risk too. So when you're stretching every day and you're practicing a healthier lifestyle, you can shrink some of this risk too. So real quick, here's some of these lifestyle behaviors. Um, we look at sleep as a, as a risk factor. If you don't get enough of it, I don't always get the best sleep. And depending on how much you're sleeping, you know, that can affect your safety. Then we got to look at nutrition. Are people eating healthy every day they come to work? What are the kinds of foods that we supply our people when they come into work? Okay. And if we're not supplying them high octane fuel, it's going to make you tired. I can see it. Now, give yourself a score. And the condition of the body, okay? If you were a paid professional athlete, would you take care of yourself to play the game? You'd have to, right? Back to those doctors that I mentioned earlier in the talk. When I was speaking to these physicians, I said, if you were a paid professional athlete, would you take care of yourself to play the game? They said, well, yeah, you'd have to if you're an athlete. I said, well, you're a medical athlete. Why are you any different? Different mindset, right? You're an autochlor athlete. Are you really any different than an athlete? Maybe your pay scale is different. Your game day is not the same. But we're humans, right? So if we take some of those principles of professional sports, apply them into Autocore, you're going to have a winning team. And that's what it's all about. A winning season every year. Be more profitable. Keep your injuries down and have a winning team. Get players of condition. Stress. Anybody here got stress? The key to stress, you got to get rid of it. The problem is people bottle stress up. And what happens with stress, you guys know. Don't get rid of it. it creates anxiety, panic disorder, heart palpitations, inflammation in the body. It's the enemy. Stress is the enemy. But it's all around us. I mean, just driving here, to be honest with you, it's a little bit, of, it's some stress. Okay? The amount of traffic you got to deal with. But put it in perspective. You can't change the environment. You can't change the traffic. You can only change the way you handle stress. So give yourself a score. You good stress manager. How's your attitude right now? I think about all the autoclor facilities. Okay, now you guys get around to several. Are there different attitudes and mentalities in the sites that you see? Where would you rank the attitudes? Where's morale at autoclor scale from one to ten? Where would you rank it? Okay, it might be different all over. And we'll get into that in our trainer trainer segment next. Then we got to look at personal safety because here's the connection. If you're sleepy, are you safe? If you're deconditioned, 
are you safe? It's all connected. So at the end of the day, if you don't take care of your lifestyle, the risk of injuries is going to go up. So connect your lifestyle to your safety. Let's make it real personal. That's what we want to do here at Auto Club. So now we're going to run through your birthdays here real quick. We're going to take through the four cores of life, kind of break this down for you and say, all right, we're all going to live to 80, and that's the end of the game. Okay. Now, again, you could live longer. Think about your relatives. Anybody here got relatives beyond 80? Okay, so I do too. Uh, my dad passed away before, just shy of 80. Uh, and then my father died. He had a pacemaker change. The wires were infected with E. coli. And he died because of that third leading cause of death, medical mistakes and infectious disease. Yeah, should have never happened. So here we go, guys. Let's take a look. Here we go. The first quarter of life is when you're first born age 20. Look at this little rock star of the day, probably. Isn't he cute? Now, if you showed up work for that outfit, how did I go over? It's cute if a baby shows up with that. But if you wore that to work, they'd be like, yeah, see you later. So the first quarter of life is the fun quarter. Now, at Autoclore, do you have any workers there in the first quarter of life at your sites, 20 or less? Or most of them over 20? Okay. Now, that first quarter of life, we've all been there, done that. And if you have kids in that first quarter, they're invincible. We all were. We could do crazy stuff back then. Life has changed, okay? And that go went by slow. You remember when you were young? Those birthdays went slow. And now that you're older, they come by faster. So then we go to the second quarter, life 21 to 30. Now we're going to go to work. We've got to pick a career. Anybody here in the next, second quarter? 21 to 39? Up, up, where are you at? 39 in seven days. Big birth. Oh. oh, congratulations. You're getting ready for halftime. Anybody else uh, close to, where are you at? 37? 48. 47. 37. 37. So we've got three in this quarter here, and the rest of us are off to the next one. Well, before I go, you guys know who this is? This is Nick Vichek. This is Life Without Limbs. The reason why I share him in this slideshow, if you think you're having a bad day, Google this guy. Just go to Life Without Limbs or put in his name, Nick Vichek. He's from Australia. He's one of the most positive guys in the world. Um, I had a chance to meet him when he came from Australia at a talk I was giving in California. He lives between California and Australia. He was born this way, never whines about anything, never complains about anything, and he works out on a regular basis with no arms or legs. And I think to myself, what's our excuse? You got a guy like this that can virtually do anything, and he's, he's, he's amazing. He got a new book called, uh, also called Life Without Limits. Great inspirational story. Check him out. He's in the second quarter of life. Halftime in life, you got one year to regroup. So you're getting close to the locker room. He's got a couple months, he'll get back in that locker room. And would you agree, in the locker room talks, you're going to regroup. And if you're losing, you want to get momentum. Let's think about the word momentum. Are you gaining momentum every year you age, or are you losing it? You know how people lose momentum with age? They go this way. And I know some people that go this way. So we want to go up, not down. Then you got uh, the fourth quarter. You're moving to the third, and I'm a third quarter guy. Who's in a third with me? So just the three of us. Now, what percentage of autochlor do you think is in this third quarter of life? Any idea? Any guess? Any yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe half the workforce? Yeah, yeah, maybe half. I mean, no one's on the tenure line, maybe. Yeah. So this 42 to 60 is a big chunk. This is our baby boomers. A lot of them are still working. And we got to protect them because in the, this quarter of life, this is when your genetics is going to increase, like your disposition. And this is also what you're going to see if you get hurt or have an injury or an accident in the third quarter, the severity is way up. So that goes by quick. Have you noticed your birthdays are coming quicker now? Every year you age, you guys are seeing it and feeling it. They go by faster. Then you hit the fourth quarter. This is, I uh, hope you have a great retirement. Fourth quarter of life should be the victory quarter, right? Because that's when you're going to win. All athletic games are won in the end, not the beginning. But the momentum that you get when you start and you carry the momentum through, typically that team's going to win. So ask yourself a question. Do you want to gain momentum in your life right now? Or do you want to let it slip? And if you truly want to gain it, you've got to take control of it. Okay? And again, there's more to this than just the stretch and physical readiness. So I hope you guys have a great retirement because i got to tell you, in my travels and what I do for a living, 
I mean, so many people that work their whole life and right before retirement or shortly after, they're not here. Do you know anybody yourself like that? Somebody in your life that worked their whole career right before or shortly after, they're not. So retire healthy. That's the goal. Now, you might live longer than 80. Then you go to overtime. Look how happy he is. Why is he so happy running down the beach? He's still alive. He can. If you're chasing anything down the beach that age, you won. Right? You won the game. Then you go to double overtime, and let's visualize. Now, my mom's in this age category. She just moved to a retirement community, and everybody's in this. Pretty much her four, everybody's in double overtime. Now, don't call that sudden death, because that's a little negative. <laughs> but let's think about double overtime. If we're on our 80s, what are we talking about? What do you think? You're 85, you're 86, I'm 85. What are we talking about? Yeah, health, grandkids, good old days. Where'd the time go? When get, seniors get newspapers, where do they turn first a lot of times? That's right. Product of the environment. So I talked to my mom. It's going to be one of three things. Who died? Her aches and pains. And she's all about the weather. Her name's Doppler Dottie. Her name's Dorothy. Her nickname's Dottie. I got a, that's her, she's stored on my cell phone, Doppler Dottie. I can be anywhere in the country, and she's dialed in on the weather, no matter where I travel. Yeah, pretty amazing. So that's the go. So here's what might happen. You start with a baby bottle, Coke, beer, and IV bag. Now, that's a little depressing. I don't think anybody here wants to finish for life with an IV bag. I had a guy who loves his beer. He said, Mark, hey, any idea? Can they put that beer into my IV bag? I said, well, I'd rather taste it instead of having my veins. But let's face facts. It is a it is a progression for some people. So the motivation, prevent this. All right, so everybody look at the evolution of an injury. When you were young, you're very resilient. Do you remember how resilient you were? Man, you were invincible. If you went back to your old days when you were a kid and you duplicated some of the crazy stuff you did when you were young, what would occur to you right now? The way you physically did things, what you got away with, the way you made party like a rock star, and you try that now, would you agree? It's a little unsettling to think what would happen. It wouldn't be pretty, probably. So we have soft tissue injuries. So let's take autoclore. What's the number one injury that you guys see in your business? Is it sprains and strains, overexertions, slips and falls. slip trips, falls? Okay. So in that category of injuries, you're not alone. It's the most common. With our niche, what we do as a sports medicine company, treating workers like athletes, you want to shrink this risk. Okay. The best way to shrink the risk in conjunction with your safety practice here as Autoclore is to do the physical readiness program every day. The reason why. In the world of sport, would you agree, every athlete in the first quarter of life or second quarter will start that game day or practice day with proper warm-up and preparation? Eliminate that from sports. How long would that team survive? That's part of the maintenance. It's like going to Jiffy Lube for the human every day. Warm the body up. Prepare it. So you got a bunch of guys in the second quarter of life. You soft tissues in the reserve, lost time, season and debilitating, and it's game over. So here's the problem. With age, you become fragile. Would you, you ever walk the halls of a nursing home? How fragile are those patients that are in those hallways or in those beds? Pretty sad, isn't it? They're on walkers, canes, or they're bedridden. Now, I met Jacqueline a couple times, and if you don't know who Jacqueline is, he was the kingpin of fitness back in the day. Okay, He put exercise on the map in America. Something that he told me, he said, Mark, while you're here, you want to thrive, not survive. A lot of people are just surviving. So let's thrive as we get older, because I'll tell you what, you get hurt down here, I've seen it happen. I've seen kids fall out of trees, and they like it. I've seen seniors step off the curbs and blow their hips, and they need a hip replaced. So you want to finish your life strong. So from a coaching perspective, this is how we look at it. Would you agree the first core of life is preparation? You go to school, figure out what am I going to do with my life, get an education, perhaps go off to college, get your degree. Now you got to get a job. You need a plan. you got to make the cash. Show me the money. Right? That's why we're all doing what we do. But part of that game plan is, okay, how's it going? At halftime, let's evaluate the plan. You're ready for the locker room. Any room for improvement for the second half? You know? So if you really see, think, where am I gaining momentum and where am I losing it? You know, the stuff that's working, keep it going. The stuff that's not, try to work on it. And then you want to implement those changes, win the game, keep momentum, and bottom line, it is survival of the fittest. And this is why a lot of our seniors will turn to those obituaries and say, okay, product and environment, who survived today? Okay. It's fact. 
So again, for me personally, if I live this long, you know, there's no guarantees in life. Let's face facts. I mean, stuff happens. The first story I wrote in my game plan book, I lost my best friend to cancer, 19 years old. You know, why'd that happen? When I worked in hospitals, I saw a lot of stuff. But we all have a good quality opportunity here to go 80 plus years, depending on lifestyle genetics. So let's finish life strong and not just survive. So when we look at the future, a lot of people, are, they plan to cash. You guys plan your money? That's a good thing. You want to have that nest egg, you know, for retirement down the road. So I see more people plan this. A lot of people don't plan their lifestyle. They just take it for granted. Now, yeah, another day, same old stuff, different day, back to work, got my job, got my paycheck, got my house, got my kids, got my stuff. And I'm a little, a little complacent with me. So what we're trying to say here at AutoClore, let's take a look at the big picture and let's plan lifestyle along with safety and all the other good stuff that you're doing. So if you don't plan your lifestyle, then you might go off to a nursing home down the road. Now, some people say, oh, that'll never happen to me, right? You've heard that a whole scenario. No, no, never. Well, it can happen to anybody, okay? Even if you do take care of yourself, I've seen stuff happen. So the odds of, of things happening shrink if you take care of you. So we're going to almost wrap up here. This is your destiny. What's your thoughts? They become your words. What's your words? They become your actions. What's your actions? They become your habits. What's your habits? They become your character. And what's your character? That becomes your destiny. It's a great statement. So what goes around comes around, guys. And this statement here is very compelling. Your future health. We spend our entire lives sacrificing our health to gain money. Then when you reach your retirement years, you sacrifice all your money and try to regain your health. Now let that soak in for a second. How true is that? that? So many people are caught up. They're caught up. Look at that doctor. I'm caught up. He was living this. He said, you know what? I got to change. Here I am trying to change my patients. I can't even change myself. I said, well, the ball's in your court, my friend. We're going to end on this slide. This is my slogan I use on my, on my SiriusXM radio show. We talk to hundreds of thousands of listeners out there, professional drivers, on the Road Dog channel. And I went out on the road with a driver years ago to experience firsthand. And the drive that I did was with a Roadway Express driver. I want to end on this story. We started in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We drove into Manhattan in a tractor trailer, 18-wheeler, okay? And I believe you guys are getting into the city here too, right? So imagine an 18-wheeler in and out. His route was to drive to Carlisle into Manhattan, drop a load, and go back to Carlisle every day, five to six days a week. We're going through the Lincoln Tunnel. I'm like on pins and needles. It was nerve wracking. And I wasn't even driving the truck. I'm just sitting here watching this. This guy, now he was a, he was an expert driver. He maneuvered that truck through the city. And I'm like, wow, this is one stressful ride. We get back from this ride. And I had to ask the guy, I said, look, I don't know about you. I know you do this for a living. But I got to tell you, that drive really stressed me out. I mean, I get stressed driving my car through Manhattan, let alone an 18-wheeler. How do you do it? He goes, well, every day I show up, it's going to be the worst day of my life. I'm here, huh? And if I come back alive and get a paycheck, not a bad deal. I said, and you look at your life that way? Yeah. I said, but that's a sad way to look at your life. He said, this is all I know. I'm a truck driver. You know, I got a regular route now. Yeah, it's stressful. But life is a journey, isn't it? And you're on it every day. So the distance, are you going to go the distance? So whatever that distance is to you. So that's why we're here at AutoClear. We, we, care, we care about you, and we want to look at your workday as a positive thing. Start your workday taking care of yourself. The most valuable asset is you. It's the worker. It's the team members. It's the coaches. It's all part of the game day. So we appreciate you listening. You have a safe and healthy day.